one this year. But that chapter is closed and number 73 opens up a new chapter here at Shea Stadium and a very important chapter. He throws that two seamer and four seam fastball. He needs ground balls to be successful. And a strike to Adrian Brown, nothing in one. Adrian Brown got into last night's game late as a defensive replacement. He's had three hits in his last 17 at bats. Ventura on the grass at third, suspicious of the bunt possibility as Rogers misses one and one. And Kenny Rogers also features that curveball. He'll throw a straight change. Over 100 wins in his career. Breaking ball looped to right. Cedeno over towards the line to make the catch. Well, defensively, and ground ball pitchers need good defense. He's got good defense. Holarud, Alfonso, Ordonez, and Ventura in the infield. Agbayani, McCray, and Cedeno in the outfield. Pratt behind the plate. 22 starts behind the plate for Todd Pratt. And Todd went over the hitters with Kenny Rogers on the Mets bench a couple of nights ago. They were pouring through some scouting reports, but more for Rogers' benefit than anything. Nunez, first ball hitting, rolls it to short. Ordonez throws him out, two men away. And that's the ground ball we've talked about. Kenny Rogers, a ground ball pitcher. In fact, he's allowed only eight home runs in 119 innings with the Oakland A's, so it's tough to lift Kenny Rogers. And he's going to throw his own game this afternoon. You always talk, Fran, about pitchers basically calling their games anyway, but Todd Pratt was especially mindful of that, given that he doesn't really know Rodgers either. On the back door slider to right, he says the scouting report, good sinker. <laughs> Strike on the outside corner to Brian Giles. Yeah, in a situation like this, you go over the hitters, and Todd Pratt talked about Kenny Rodgers' repertoire, but... It's up to Kenny Rogers. He makes a decision when to throw it and what to throw. He's got a lot of experience, and he has, as we mentioned earlier, over 100 wins. Upstairs with a fastball. The left-handers have actually hit Rogers a little bit better than the right-handers this year. Left-hand batters at 308 against Kenny. The righty's 283. Mm. One ball, two strikes now. That's a knee buckler right there. Brian Giles had the knees buckle on that hook. Watch the knees. Giles, a good major league hitter, and they just collapse. Everything collapsed on that curveball. So it'll be a one-two pitch to Brian Giles. And the breaking ball low. Giles has scored 17 runs and hit five homers in his last 15 ball games. Picked up a couple doubles to left field in his ball game, or I should say in this series. Pitches that were out over the plate. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Another breaking ball. So the count full to Brian Giles, who, although he's in the American League with Kenny Rogers, not really hit against him. He's 0 for 1 against him, but basically didn't play for Cleveland against left-hand pitching. Here, Giles is playing every day. Mm -hmm. And the curveball in there for a call. Whoa. Ball four? Not that. Where was that? I apologize, but boy, take another look at this. C.B. Buckner said it was too high. I'm sure that umpires can be fooled just like a pitcher, just like a hitter. Anybody on the field can be fooled, and here's a Where's good that? pitch. Where is it? Look at Giles. The legs collapsed again. He was ready. I think Giles felt it was strike three. Look at Pratt was going one way, Giles the other. And you see Kenny Rogers going off. Outstanding curveball in the strike zone. It was called a ball. So a fastball upstairs to Brian Young. One ball, no strikes. <laughs> That's what I get for playing umpire. It happens to everybody. More so to you, though, Howie, because uh, you were umpiring here I, years ago. I, I'm auditioning, you know. There could be some openings. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Saw that sinker, and Kevin Young swung right over the top. Brian Giles thankful to draw that walk. Mets are deep and straight away against Kevin Young, who has good power. Swing and a miss, one and two. Good changeup. Kenny Rogers pulling the string on Kevin Young. Now, we saw the Mets go inside and get Kevin Young in last night's ball game with a fastball almost off the plate inside. He dives into the pitch. Short lead for Giles. Inside, two balls, two strikes. A 12-10 start here at Chase Stadium this afternoon. A good idea because it gives the camp kids 
a chance to get here and see the whole game. It used to be when they'd start at 140 or even in years prior to that when they started at 2 o'clock, the camp kids had to leave about the 6th or 7th inning. Now they could see the whole ball game. Nothing doing at first base. Every once in a while a kid would try and beat the system, hide under the seat and take the bus home. And bad news. <laughs> Parents will lock the doors on you. Three balls, two strikes, and that'll mean an automatic start for the base runner, Brian Giles. One of the criticisms of Rogers over the years, particularly with the Yankees, was that he would tend to nibble rather than attack hitters. Here it'll be a payoff pitch with the runner going on the way. And it's lined into right center. Hustling over is McCray, but on his way to third is Giles. So the Pirates have runners at the corners in somewhat improbable style when you consider that it looked like Rogers had frozen Giles for a called third strike. Instead, it was ruled ball four. And then on a payoff pitch, Kevin Young lines one to right center. Well, when scouts look at hitters, they want to know does the ball explode off the bat. Watch his ball explode off Kevin Young's bat. It was a line shot in the center field, and it did explode. That blew our tape machine it to pieces. It certainly did. <laughs> and you could see Kevin Young, or you couldn't see Kevin Young, dive into the ball. So now it's Ed Sprague doing that Mickey Tendleton impression. With runners at the corners and two out. Grounded to the hole, Ordonez to second. And the side retired. Kenny Rogers is going to like that. He's got to love it. Going in the hole, making the catch and the throw. And Rogers and the Mets are out of it here in the first. Mets will take their hacks against Todd Ritchie here in the first inning. The Mets lineup for today, presented by Bobby Valentine. Gives Ricky Henderson the day off, so Cedeno in the leadoff spot. Olerud back in the lineup after sitting last night. Brian McRae also starting after having set out the last couple. Todd Pratt picking up Piazza this afternoon as Cedeno takes a strike from 27-year-old Todd Ritchie. Ritchie out of the Minnesota Twins organization. He pitched in Minnesota the last two years. Signed here in Pittsburgh, or with the Pirates anyway, as a free agent. He's been used as a starter most of this season, whereas he was used out of the bullpen by Tom Kelly in Minnesota. And the Mets should be aware when they're on the bases because he's thrown 21 wild pitches. Line to center, Giles makes the catch. Richie has thrown 21 wild pitches over the last three years. Batting second, number 13, second baseman Eduardo Alfonso. So Cedeno back to the bench as Edgardo Alfonso steps in. See the 4.01 ERA in 17 starts for the right-hander. 62 strikeouts in 107 and two-third innings. <laughs> Nothing at one to Fonzi. Alfonso, a couple of more hits in last night's game. He's had 10 for his last 20. His highest single season average was two points lower than where it stands today. A couple years ago, he hit 315 for the year. Now he's at 317. And as we've talked about the last couple of nights, producing runs out of the two hole. Testament to how Ricky Henderson, and when he's let off, Roger Cedeno have shown a propensity for getting on base. Two balls, one strike now to Alfonso. Foul back two and two. Kenny Rogers was introduced at his press conference a couple of days ago. He was talking about what a pleasure it's going to be to pitch to the Mets infield. He specifically mentioned Ordonez, and he knew about Robin Ventura, of course, from the American League. And he said, and I hear that second baseman, um, what's Al Alfonso, right? He's pretty good. Oh, he's pretty good, all right. He hits one deep to left field. How do you like that, Kenny Rogers? He'll help you with the bat, too. One to nothing, Mets. Well, Alfonso has shaken it up, baby, here at Shea Stadium. Alfonso hitting a home run over the left field wall. And for the second baseman, as you look at it again, his 15th home run of the season. Richie challenging Alfonso with that high fastball and 15. 
15 home runs for the second baseman with the Mets. John Olaru takes a strike, so Kenny Rogers, you know who he is now. Breaking ball to Olaru. No balls, two strikes. John's average down to 301 now. He's had two hits and 12 trips on the homestand, which concludes today. Fastball misses inside. The Mets will go to Chicago and play the Cubs over the weekend. And then on to Milwaukee. Olerud with that good eye is tied for second in the National League with 84 walks. And that eye enabled him to hold off on the changeup by Richie. It's two and two. So the Mets strike first. On home run number 15 by Alfonso. Fouled away. Still two and two. Olerud did not get into last night's game, which was the first time this year the Mets played a game that Olerud, in some fashion or other, was not a part of. And the 2 2 on the way. In there for a call, strike three. First strikeout for Richie, two men away as he slips a fastball on the inside corner. And defensively for the Pirates at the corners they have 15 errors by Kevin Young and Ed Sprague has 21. Morris at second, Nunez at short. You got Garcia, Giles, and Adrian Brown in right field. Giles with seven outfield assists leads the team. Joe Oliver behind the plate. And by the way, Benson is not pitching. Richie's pitching. Well, the Mets are glad to know that. Oh, Benson was unbelievable last night, throwing strikes, getting ahead of the Mets. 1 0 to Ventura. And that catches the inside corner. Same right. pitch he just threw uh, John Olerud. Benson looked like he could have pitched 20 innings last night. In fact, when the final out was caught, didn't look like he wanted to leave the mound. Bouncing ball foul. One ball, two strikes. Oh, and you think about it. You know, a number of people talked about it last night. We discussed it very briefly. Chris Benson is proving to be what Paul Wilson was supposed to have been had injuries not derailed Wilson's career. Similarities are obvious as they were both drafted first overall in the nation. But when you look at Benson as you did a moment ago, just facially, boy, he looks like Tommy Glavin. Two and two to Ventura. Glavin about six feet tall. Benson six four. Yeah, just facially now. I'll tell you, it looks like he has the same demeanor on the mound. Very confident, relaxed, as Glavin. Full count now to Ventura. Robin, two hits, including a home run last night. Batting cleanup today with Mike Piazza getting the afternoon off. And the payoff pitch. Fly ball, deep right field. Adrian Brown to the wall. For Robin Ventura, the Mets are leading by a score of two to nothing. And RBI number 78 for the Mets third baseman. Twenty home runs, and Kenny Rogers said he was well aware of Robin Ventura's ability from the American League. Richie is also. He threw that fastball a little bit above the belt, and Ventura got the head of the bat out there. He hits it a long way over the right field wall. Watch the ball jump off his bat. So Robin Ventura, Richie knew it was gone. To hit the beach, today you can order an extra large, extra thick Mitch beach towel for only $19.99, but you better hurry because supplies are limited. To order your Mets beach towel, call 718-507-TIXX. That's 718-507-TIXX. And call right now because operators are standing by. And when you get the beach towel, you go over there, lay down, get some sun. A three-hour tour. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about that shot. Takes you back a few years. By the way, Dave Iori, cameraman for us here on Fox Sports Net in New York, wants everybody to know that his sister and brother-in-law, Nancy and Joe Fideli, just became proud parents of Amanda Lee Fideli. So congratulations, Nancy and Joe and Dave. Second inning, Warren Morris 
First ball hitting right to Ordonez. One down. Well, those two runs coming out of the shoot will certainly relax a Kenny Rogers. And no matter how much experience and no matter how many wins you have in the major leagues, you're going to be anxious in a situation like this. Not only is Kenny Rogers thrown onto the Mets ball club, a team that is chasing the Braves, but let's face it, New York. He's back in New York. He had an unsuccessful period in New York with the Yankees, and he would like to prove some people wrong. Well, one thing that's going to help talk about the defense that the Mets exhibit on the infield here. How's this for a statistic that jumps out at you? Rodgers has given up nine unearned runs this year. That, of course, all coming while pitching for the Oakland A's. You know the Mets as a team, and this is the Mets' 103rd game of the year. As a team, the Mets have allowed only 13 unearned runs. Two balls, one strike to Freddie Garcia. Garcia has been a versatile part of this Pirate Club. Rodonia is a big part of that mid infield, along with Edgardo Alfonso. Terrific double play combination. And then there's Ventura at third. Two away. So of the five outs recorded by Rogers so far, four of them have come on the ground. Good move with that hand. It looked like that ball took a tricky hop. Not a bad tricky hop, just a tricky hop. Move that glove a little bit to his right. So you call that a playful hop. Yeah. Well, Robin's got a sense of humor. Well, that was a good shot of that ball moving down there. And Ventura making the adjustment with the glove. Change up for a strike to Joe Oliver. Nothing in one. Saw that ball right into his glove. Sunglasses and all. Fouled away. Advantage Rogers. No balls. Two strikes. If you wonder why 73. I mean who wears 73. Well he wore 37. Most of his career. That number's been retired here. In honor of Casey Stengel. Couldn't wear it with the Yankees either. At 17 there. This time he decided to just flip flop the digits. Yeah, He's not going back to 17. Not the number he wore with the Yankees. And he wants to get as far away from that experience. As possible. Although. He did admit, talking to Matt Lachlan, there's unfinished business. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a guy like to, that, he just doesn't want to be stigmatized as not being able to pitch in New York. Oh, well, he's getting a second opportunity right here with the Mets. A little bit of added pressure for the left-hander. And the 2-2 pitch on the way to Oliver. Slowly hit, and Rodgers takes care of it himself. So they're doing just what he wants them to do. Pound it into the ground. And the defense does the rest. This time, though, Rogers helps himself. Middle of the second, two to nothing, New York. Since the uh, last two years, um, if I get out of my game plan, that's when I probably will have problems by trying to do more than I'm capable of doing. Um, just like with any other player, any other position, whatever. Um, not to try and do things I'm not capable of doing. Uh, like, I'm not a guy that looks for strikeouts. I look for ground balls quick, early in the count, hopefully. Um, I'll stay with that, that um, philosophy, especially with the infield we have here, and uh, um, see what, what works out. Oh, and one to Abraham Nunez. Rogers, by the way, will throw over when there's a base runner about as often as anyone in the major leagues. It's ironic that Levon Hernandez, before being traded from the Marlins to the Giants, was mentioned as a possibility coming here because he throws over about the same amount. Once again, Rogers going to first base. If you're a catcher, you like the idea. Trying to keep that runner close. Give the catcher an opportunity to throw him out if he does try and steal. You know, a lot of times when you when you're behind the plate, signs come from the dugout today when you when you tell the pitcher to throw over. It's the hat trick. And they, and they, they also have the option themselves to throw to throw over to first base. Bobby knows the routine. He had him in Texas. Bruce Benedict relayed the signs. Todd Pratt says the same. Rogers hits the outside corner. Nothing in two. He, he'd be great for a catcher because he just threw over to first base a number of times and then he did the slide step going home. You're not going to get a jump off of Kenny Rogers. Chris Benedict, the former major league catcher. 
That's going to be tough to steal off Rodgers with that slide step. Bruce Benedict, you see Todd Pratt looking into the dugout. Getting signs from Bruce Benedict whether or not to throw over, whether or not to pitch out. Breaking ball got him. First strikeout for Kenny Rogers. Two men away. Who's going to steal against Kenny Rogers when he throws over the first base a lot and then gets the ball to the catcher in a hurry? Good breaking ball. You got Nunez way out in that front foot. Watch him commit himself too soon. Hands collapse. There's nothing you can do. Once your hands come forward and you're still waiting for the ball to get to the plate, you're not going to do anything with the bat. So now with two out, Rogers will face Brian Giles, who took a 3-2 curveball. Rogers thought he had him struck out. Todd Pratt thought he was struck out. Brian Giles was awarded first base by C.B. Buckner. Outside, one and nothing. That's with a two to nothing lead on solo home runs by Alfonso and Ventura in the first inning. Rogers has walked two, struck out one. Two balls, no strikes. See Rogers pitching off the right side of the rubber. Some left handers like to go all the way over to the left side. And you come at a left hander almost from behind him. Once again, Rogers going to first base. towards the right field corner and that is a foul ball. Well this Giles he talked about the quickness of his bat the other night and once again opening up and getting the head of the bat out there in a hurry to turn this pitch and pull it down the right field line. Watch the quickness of his body and that bat come through the hitting zone. Boom. Mm. Giles with 21 home runs this year and 66 RBIs batting over 300. Two balls one strike two outs. Fly to center. McCray in a couple of steps and the side retired. A two out walk nothing more issued by Rogers in the third. I think there's a lot of answers there mm -hmm. but the one question I've got for them is why are they wearing ties this afternoon? It's only 90 plus degrees. Who, who are they representing? Probably a clothing <laughs> store. <laughs> Nothing in one to Kevin Young. That can't be a camp. Maybe they're consulates. If that's a camp, they've all got desk jobs. <laughs> Ventura charging is going to have to hurry, and he gets Kevin Young one away. What do you think? Do umpires miss pitches occasionally? You tell us. Why are one of these pitches a strike and the other one a ball? Because the umpire is human behind the plate. And C.B. Buckner calling this pitch on Brian Giles back in the first inning. And there's a late break to this ball. Might have fooled Buckner. Maybe he took his eye off the ball, but it was a good pitch. Here's the pitch in the third inning. Same pitch, but thrown to a right-hander. It's a strike to Nunez in the third inning, but it was thrown to a right-hander. He might have had a better view of the ball because the right-handed batter, maybe he lost the ball with Giles hitting, who was the left-handed hitter. The ball was thrown behind Giles and broke over the plate. And you see he has a good view of the ball thrown to the right-hander, Ed Sprague, right there. If you take a look at that pitch to Giles in the first inning, might have started behind Giles. Maybe Buckner lost sight of the ball. Inside to Ed Sprague, two and one. Boy, Sprague has eaten up Kenny Rogers over the course of their careers. Ed Sprague, 12 hits and 30 at bats, now 31 with his first inning ground out, and three home runs against Kenny. Low, three balls and a strike. See our in-game box. The Pirates with one hit so far in this ball game. 
Kevin Young getting a base hit into center field. Only hit off Kenny Rogers so far. 3-1 to Spray. To Ordonez. Put the in-between hop. And Spray barely running down to first. Two men away. And Sprague, who slipped out of the box throughout his career, has handled Kenny Rogers very well. Sprague batting 400 against Kenny Rogers. And you see Sprague slipping and falling coming out of the batter's box. Sprague also has three home runs against Kenny Rogers. Seven out of 11 outs by Rogers on the ground. As Warren Morris fouls the first pitch back, going one. So to this, well, he was a delight to catch. <laughs> you want to talk about a guy that's going to call his own game? You're going to put the signs down. But he's going to be shaken. Broken, uh, pardon me, breaking ball on the ground to second. The bats in one piece. But the Pirates are retired. Rogers threw three ground ball outs in the fourth as the Pirates go in order. They'll have the AFLAC answer when we get back. And instead of being part of it, Todd Hundley was 1,500 miles away in desolate Port St. Lucie, Florida, sweating under a killer sun, trying to rehab his injured elbow and become an outfielder. The 98 season, it sounds real good, to be honest with you. It'll give my elbow uh, time off. Uh, the elbow is not 100% yet but it will give it a chance to, to recuperate. He feels that, that getting back to this team is paramount. I feel him getting back to this team is paramount. If he's playing the outfield, he gets back here sooner, so it's, it's a perfect situation. Every day, Hundley takes 40 minutes of batting practice and an hour and a half of fly balls off live hitting and in drills. There's still some pain in the elbow, but the transition is going smoothly. He's tracking the ball. He's just trying to get a feel for what he's doing, leaning one way or the other way, trying to see what ball comes off the bat, that kind of thing, just getting his eyes adapted to the you know, depth perception. We have a lot of things going for us. One is he wants to do it, and, and that's very, very important. Two is he's a good athlete, a very good athlete, and uh, the reports are good. I know the opposing hitters and their tendencies, and I know most of our pitching staff and, and the way they're going to pitch these guys. Give me some time. Let me work out there. I might tell you to, you know, to burn the catcher's gear. I want to stay in the outfield. When Hundley returns, the outfield situation in New York is going to get pretty crowded. He'll play some left field instead of Bernard Gilkey, who's his best friend on the team. He'll play some right field instead of Butch Husky, who understands the situation. The Mets have used all sorts of people in the outfield this year. One more is not going to hurt. Our offense has been the thing that struggled, and I think there's no question bringing an all-star bat into the lineup, lineup like Todd Hundley with Mike Piazza and John Olerud makes us a very powerful offensive team. Hundley has a good attitude about coming back, partly because the Mets, in a show of good faith, put a no-trade clause in his contract so he could not be dealt to a non-contender. Where we could have had controversy and problems everything else, I think we've set it up to be successful right now. It was a little bit tough because there was a little bit of, of friction there, and obviously he's con concerned about his personal situation. And I've maintained all along, I said, you know, hey, he's got to obviously look out for his own personal interests. He didn't have a great attitude a month ago when the Mets acquired Mike Piazza. Then soon after, someone in the organization leaked a story that Hundley had a drinking problem. I'm not going to let some ruin my frame of mind and uh, my career and put a wedge between myself and the fans uh, in New York. Where it came from, I still don't know. I will find out one day. I'll have to look under some rocks and some, I mean, probably in some trash cans to find this uh, snake and little rat. Several catchers in the last 30 years have moved to other positions extending their careers. Joe Torre went to third, Craig Biggio to second, and Brian Downing to the outfield. When Elston Howard came, Yogi Berra went out to the left in left field and played in World Series out there and continued his career. Hey, it, it's happened before right here in, in the Big Apple. Maybe it could happen again. He's probably going to be a little bored out there. I can guarantee you that. Because I, I, I remember a couple times when I played other positions, I was, I was like, man, it's boring. I'm always a catcher. I'll be able five years from now pick up a catcher's glove and catch. I'm always a catcher. I don't see how, uh, you know, the New York Mets can't sign Mike Piazza after... Bring him, bringing him here to New York. Hundley is signed through the year 2000. By then, who knows, Piazza could be back with the Dodgers and Hundley could be catching again. For now, he's an outfielder who can't wait to leave Barron, Port St. Lucie, and return to the thrill of Shea Stadium.
Thanks, Tim. The Mets 19 and 14 since acquiring Piazza. Comparing the two catchers, fielding percentage about even. Piazza's thrown more men out than Hundley did last year, and his bad.